Hello students, my name is Roberto Don Agustin. Um, if for everything I'm gonna apologize about my accent, I am not from here, as you can tell. But I've been here for 13 years now, so hopefully uh, you guys can understand me. Um, again, I've been here for 13 years in Greenville, North Carolina. I live in Charlotte for like a year. I went to school at BCCC and I'm currently a student at Winston Salem University. Tonight I'm going to do a presentation for you guys and I'm going to tell you why it's so important. I choose the microbiology de um, field because I work in a microbiology department in Vital Medical Center in Greenville, North Carolina. It is a huge hospital, probably one of the biggest one in the state. It is growing even more, it's constructing a cancer a, um, oncologist hospital now, what we call it here. Uh, but it's getting bigger and it's getting better, I think. I choose microbiology because I believe it's an important field. It's growing, it's getting more technology and more advanced day by day. So I love it so far. I've been here for like a year and a half, almost two years. And um, I choose a topic for, for us tonight, which is the group P stress. I, I love choosing topics from microbiology because we're specialists. Not all the hospitals have access to microbiology. It's too expensive and uh, usually it's, it's hard to get experience on it. So as soon as I got the opportunity, I got to work in the microbiology department. I still got a lot to learn. I did here for only two years, but I love it and I would like to share some testing with you. As I've been doing during these semesters, at the school and you know for my bachelor's sharing what you know other hospitals don't have and I believe this is fun it's uh, entertaining and hopefully all the hospitals and I'm fixing my stuff over here can have uh, the money and the technology someday for our patients and of course so we all can help each other anyway I choose this test over here and I'm gonna get close to the camera over here Carrot broth. I love this test. It's very colorful, it's very specific, and I think it's better than the old one. This is for a group B strep, as we know. I uh, believe it's about 34, 35 week gestation, pregnancy, and the women, they have to get all of them, they have to get this test, group B strep, which is normal flora for uh, genitalia in uh, the fem females, obviously, but not for babies. So we want to make sure that group B strep is not there. Obviously they get medicated and I don't think, because I'm not sure, I don't think it is very difficult to treat unless they have other issues somewhere, some, something like that. But I'll talk about that later. Anyway, this broth contain, I mean this kit contain these little vials, uh, I say, and we have bottles which have a little little pass I don't have it here but you, you can tell it's in there we put it in there when we activate pretty much this test this is what happened car, car broth is going to inoculate only group B strip here so you students have to know this why you know well they have chemical reactions of course and you know right now we're just focusing on this so we act we put the, the path in there and we activate this. Our specimen, as you know, is a swab, usually this, and I just brought this a sample. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that swab, vaginal rectal specimen. And uh, once we activate, we put it in there. I, this is the important part, students. We let these, once we put the pad in here, we let these at room temperature for 15 minutes because this is, these are supposed to be refrigerated. So we gotta let them let it sit for 15 minutes or room temp. 15 minutes should be okay, but we cannot set it up full. And again, this is an important part. Once we activate it, 15 minutes have passed. We put the specimen, we, we break the swab, swab in there, and we close it tight. Once we put it in there, we put it in a rack. And this has to be incubated at 30, 35 to 37 degrees, like any other plate, and they grow. The procedure says, that we have to wait 18 to 24 hours to read it. So 
So we have to be checking. Now, in this lab, we put everything pretty much in a huge incubator, so we kind of check on it every time we put plates in there. Why is this? The reaction that we have, again, and, the, and this is plain, as you can see, is, is pretty much white, is negative. It's considered negative. So the student has to realize what is positive. So the procedure says in the kit, and we have it over here too, is that this vial, this tube, is going to get orange. This is positive, and that's pretty much the group B strip positive. So it means it's there. So let me show you what we call a positive. And this is why it's called strep B carrot kit. Carrots. Because it's orange. Now let me just get closer. And there is no information over here. There is nothing that we can see. So I'm just, re I'm just using real examples. And I love this test. It is orange. Hopefully you can see. Okay. And that's what I choose to be this room because it's white on the back. It's white on the back. So we can see. This is positive right there. Now, students, this is important. What about if you see spots? What about if you, you know, you see something? Yeah, there is another color. If it's another color, obviously, it's negative. However, if you see any spot that is orange, even just little dots, it's still positive. And I'm gonna show you what I believe, it's a little old, but um, still orange, somehow. And sometimes you can see that it's just spots orange. So the students, have to be able to recognize any spots in the orange to call it positive. We want to know that this mom is positive for really strep before she delivers. At this point, she's about to deliver. So we want to tell the doctor and the nurse, you know what, uh, this patient needs to be treated before she delivers. So it's very critical and it's very important. A nice trick that I learned from the guys over here for, this, for the senior techs is that you put a white paper and you can see it's orange. It's better. So that's how you detail. Now, there is a limitation for it. Big, big limitation. What about we got a swab that is bloody and we have to have for any other reason? Um, honestly, I don't call it because you cannot differentiate the red from the blood from the orange. So, this is just part of it, it's just half of it. So, what do we do to negative? To negative test. Well, we get the same vial, and let me get the negative one. Let's say, you know, after 18 to 24 hours, we have to stop it again. It's 24 hours negative. We don't stop there. We have to continue. So we solve it. Where do we solve it? Let me just get my other plates over here. The group B strep plates. These are special plates, and I'm not sure if all the hospital have it. I don't think so. Where I used to work before, we just don't have it, or didn't have it. Uh, this horse, this is gonna, uh, this plate is gonna just select group B strips. So if the negative from the vial didn't catch it, pretty much we can solve it again, and another 24 hours read it again, just to make sure it's not there. And it has happened where you know it's just not enough. Something didn't happen. It, it did not incubate right that we resolve it, we pretty much put a swab in there, resolve it, and uh, wait another 24 hours. So students, you gotta make sure you're timing, 18 to 24 hours, not more than that, no longer than that, because then the specimen is not valid. And you know in, this, in the laboratory area, you have to be very accurate, very detailed, and 18 to 24 hours is the limit. Know your limitations, and then you'll set up the best you know test for the patient, which is patient care is our main goal. So anyway. Again, we saw it with this GBS detect, that's how it's called, especially for a GB strip. Now, some enterics will grow on this, so you have to know specifically what you are looking for. So, as we know, we got a hemolysis from this, and you can see from this example, and I, that's why I like this sample, because I can get it from here, and I ask for permission and everything over here at the hospital. You can see the hemolysis in there. See the clearing? Let me just hold it this side. See the clearing? On the third quadrant, we do three quadrants over here. We have some enterics. And I asked the senior text. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the hemolysis. That's group B strip. And that's a positive right there. So again, we solve it one more time. 
and then 18 to 24, 24 hours, we check the plates, solve it, plates, we call it. So we have two chances to call this. I believe if the, if the colonies are too young, the text have to read a third time on the same plate, on the same plate. But we have several chances. Hopefully we don't miss it and we can tell the page. I got another plate over here, which is a regular block shibagar. You can tell me just open. And I'm using gloves, of course. This is pretty much pure. And this is so from the other one. This is a real example. And again, there is no information or anything. So this is how we know it. This is what we do, we solve it. And from there, from a pure plate, young colony that we know that we identify completely, and we do all the testing, they do sensitivities in the morning, usually for a ship. I haven't done it, to be honest, but that's what we do. However, <laughs> this is about probably just an extra information, but we don't do sensitivities unless the patient, we are sure that the patient is um, allergic penicillin. It's a universal medication, antibiotic for patients who have it. But again, if she's allergic, we do sensitivity. So that's, that's what we transfer to plate to plate. We get younger colonies so to get the best sensitivity, and that's how we do it. So again, I like to, I like to share this to students. <laughs> um, just learn that you have, you know, your time pretty much. You got samples of positives. You know, you're, you're time in 18 to 24 hours, your limitations, which is usually like the dirty specimens, 24 hours. Sometimes you see one single dot. You don't want to call it positive either. So you give it another hour, maybe if it's not, you know, if you know past that range of 24 hours, just to, you know, give it some time to grow. Or you can solve it, and then, you know, in the morning, usually the next morning is ready if it's too young again they give another 24 hours to read it again. So it's kind of hard to miss. Kind of hard to miss. Uh, know your limitations. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I asked for permission to my supervisor who is going to watch this video, so I hope she likes it too, and uh, maybe some seniors that would like to see me. Um, please send me any questions if you need to do anything, or I mean anything, anything. If you need me to do anything, I can ask supervisors, I can ask um, a manager or you know, senior take that. They can help me out. Just let me just recheck what I have over here. I just want to share the, the last page. Let's it down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pretty much what I said, 37 gestation. And uh, it's very important, very important for our babies, for our community. So any questions, just let me know. If the, instructor, if the instructor knows something or she wants to know something, just contact me. And uh, well, good luck to everyone, and I'll see you later.